So I wanted to talk to you all about building a trading plan. Now, I'm not talking about the one that you already see everyone else talking about. The reason is because so many people write things down just for the sake of writing it, but they never stick to it. Now, I hope from today's lesson, you will start to think a little deeper into your actions and plans moving forward. So let's move on. And before we do, as I always say, if you like the content, please drop a like, subscribe and turn on notifications. So let's move on. What is a trading plan? Now, in the simplest form, it's a self-reflective tool that's going to help to guide you to your goals and aspirations in life. Now, it's not just a piece of paper with rules and regulations on it. It should be something that is much deeper than that. Now, I always say that it's impossible for someone to plan a trip, let's say with their family or their friends, and not know the destination that they're going to. Now, you can imagine the excitement that leads to all of the planned activities that you're looking for or that you're planning to do. Now, of course, you're not going to go through all that effort and then walk out the door seamlessly trying to find your way there. This is true for trading. Now, there's so much that people want to do as a trader, and especially when they come into it, and they want to achieve stuff, but it's going to be impossible without clear direction. Now, when you plan to achieve something greater in life, you need to have your goals set out. Now, I'm not talking about these stupid things that come out of people's mouths. You know, I want a Lambo. I want 150k a day. I want to buy a jet. Screw you and screw them if that's how you think. Until you learn to set your foundation with the elementary things first, you're not getting nowhere. And you're definitely not going to get close unless, of course, you win the lottery. You need to be making sure that you are motivated by what you're really aiming for. So firstly, what changes do you need to happen now? Once you figure them out, you then need to break them down and work on them one by one. Your wealth and what you attract will only come as you grow as a person. Achieving goals requires commitment, and I'm certainly not talking about a month's worth of commitment. If your trading plan is well mapped out, then what you'll find is as time goes on, if you're disciplined and focused and committed to the things you first mentioned, you will learn to stay within those boundaries. Now, most traders and, of course, most people in life have no boundaries. And I will tell you from my own experience that if you do not set yourself limits, you will become the most unhappiest and depressed person you can be. Always have it in your mind the real reason why you are trading, what you want to achieve, where you want to be, who you want to help along the way, what is most important to you. This is what a trading plan is. Not where to enter, where to take profit. Screw that crap. If that was true, then everyone would be making it happen. Now, if trading is what you really want to do, then what you'll find yourself doing is jumping out of the bed every morning. You'll be up early, you'll be checking for the news, you'll be scanning the markets, You'll be writing down your plan for the day, probably setting your alerts, preparing your mind and so on and so forth. But most people do not do this. They set their alarms probably 30 minutes before work, jump out of bed, put their clothes on, use the loo and then rush out the door. Now, whilst they're on their way to work, they probably scan over their trades on their phone and try to take, uh, take a trade quickly before they start work. And then guess what? They question why they're not getting the results they want. Firstly, let me tell you something. Results are a byproduct of your hard work. The less work you put in, the less of the results you will achieve. The more work you put in, quote, smart work you put in, the likelihood is your results will be greater. So this brings us to your why. And why you need to make sure you have this clearly defined. Now, the importance of this has been studied so intensely that you can now even get courses on really finding your why. 
But my short and simple answer for you is this. Before you found trading, was the things that all those traders on social media and Facebook and YouTube have really what you wanted? Or was you exposed to it and now you want it because you think that your life would be a whole lot different if you could just make 150k a day? Well, my why is time. I value time so much, it's unbelievable. And I know that if I do not continue to focus, stay committed, work hard, I will eventually have to give my time back to somebody else. When I honed in on my why, you will not believe the things that have come to me and what I have attracted. Now, is it easy? Hell no. Do I want to give up at times? Hell yes. Will I? Hell no. Write down what you are best at, what you need to work on and get to damn work. Don't keep telling yourself things you have to second guess. Digging deeper means everything you write down is everything you desire. Because if it's not, as mentioned earlier, the motivation to do it will be bleak. Trading is a personal thing. It's like wearing an outfit. Now, if it's too tight or too loose, then it's just not going to work for you. Now, if it fits well, you're going to be happy to wear it and you're going to feel a lot more confident. Now, this is the same for your trading strategy. Now, I don't care if Joe Bloggs or Fireman Sam is using it and it works for them. It doesn't mean it will work for you. Ask yourself, what type of person am I? Am I patient, in control of my emotions? When someone bumps into me, do I get easily annoyed? If I drop something whilst cooking, do I curse? If not, guess what? You're probably more suited to maybe intraday trading or something a little more aggressive like scalping because you're in control of your emotions, so this may suit you better. Now, if you're the total opposite, then day trading or scalping may not be for you. Because you may find yourself revenge trading or losing the plot and then eventually blowing your account. Now, you may need something like end of day trading where you can look at your charts probably once a day at home on your PC and disconnect from trading altogether whilst you're out. Now, the point is you need to be honest with yourself and figure out what strategy is going to work for you experiment you will get the feel for it eventually and you need to ask yourself does this fit my lifestyle can i really spend this much time looking at my charts do i need something more long term because i have children i have a family now these are very important things to think about remember you're your own person and not one single trader in this world is the same or will ever see the charts the way you do. So stop wasting your time looking for the holy grail. Become your own master and advocate of what you do in your life. Now, when writing down your strategy, you need to define these important things. What is your key time frame? This should be one time frame only. Now, I personally like to use the 4H with my strategy only. Now, this should help you map out your key levels that you'll be using as your guide for looking for potential trading opportunities. Secondly, you need a behavioral time frame. Now, mine is the one hour time frame. What I use this for is to monitor in detail what my key time frame is telling me. Finally, my entry time frame, which for me is the 15 minute time frame. Now, this is where I would look for my patterns and a safe stop loss for when entering trades. Now, I don't care about my take profit. I focus all my attention on risk management because I know my wins will come. Next, I would set a time for when you plan to trade. Too much exposure to your charts can be extremely detrimental. It could cause overtrading, FOMO, fear of trading itself develops, and the list goes on. Now, I personally look to trade from about 10 a.m. to about 2 p.m and then around 11 p.m. till midnight. Now, I briefly scan over my charts for setups daily, and if there's nothing available, then I'll walk away, and I'll come back again when I have the time. Now, I have a family and other commitments, 
So I cannot allow for trading to be a thorn in my life. Remember, I need my time. Next, I would focus a lot on your risk management, more than how you plan to make X amount of money. Because without a risk management plan, you really have nothing. And we're going to move on to that in a second. Now, you all probably have heard the saying, prevention is better than cure. Now, I say this with so much passion. In anything and everything you do in life, if you know you shouldn't be doing it, no matter what it is, you will always feel crappy after you do it. Then you say, I wish I never done it. And then the more you do it, unfortunately, the easier it becomes to accept what you are doing is right, even if it's not. But eventually you will find that you will lose everything you have and have around you, sending you into a state of oblivion. Now, trading is exactly the same. This is why when writing your risk management plan, make sure you only trade with what you can afford to lose. Never a penny more or less. And if you find that you're anxiously trading because of the fear of losing what you're trading with, you need to stop altogether. It's only going to do you worse and slow your growth. I don't care how many people post on um, YouTube about turning 2000 into 180k. How many videos do you really see of this happening? They hit the jackpot and jackpot certainly does not come around often. Next, you need to define your risk per trade. It really is as simple as that. Until you become consistent, profitable and confident in your abilities, do not deviate. Next, figure out what your risk management factor is. Mine is five losses in a row. If this happens, I will stop, review what I'm doing, figure out what's affecting me in my life. Did I take my trades as planned? Did I manage them as planned? And then go from there. You will never see me seamlessly trading for the sake of trading. And the final tip is to stick to it. That is as simple as it is. Whatever you do in between this is up to you. But as long as you stick to these three simple things, then I don't care if you take profits early, whether you take profits late, take free trades at the total of your whole intended risk percent, you will eventually learn to refine these things. But during this process, stay afloat to get through these phases because you are sticking to your plan. And the only way to do this is to follow those three things. Now, you need to define your goals. Now, I'm not talking about I need a big house in three years to accommodate for my Ferrari and swimming pool and basketball court. Yeah, doesn't work like that. Determine what it is you would really like to achieve. Not need to achieve, because I will tell you now, there are much more easier things to do other than trading. Be very specific with your goals. Have a weekly goal, and it might be to stick to my plan and not over trade. Next, a monthly goal. Maybe to focus on risk management and finish the month break even. Next, quarterly goals. To trade systematically and trust the process without losing more than 10% of my account. Now, I'm sure you get the point. This is how you build stepping stones to the next steps you will face on your journey. Work on one thing at a time. Make sure your goals are realistic and achievable. Make sure you document absolutely everything from your entries, your exits, wins, losses, screenshots, how you feel in time of the day, um, what, what trade you took, what trade you, I don't care. Document everything. Once a week, you need to spend time going over this because there will be weeks you are more focused than others. And what you'll be able to do is determine your best state of mind to trade in and create a plan around the times you're best to trade and a plan around times you're best not to trade. You will only be able to get this information from the information you document. You may also find out that your trading strategy works best in the New York session and less in the London Open. The more you figure out, the more you can filter, and then the likelihood is that you will start to see your results change dramatically. Now, this makes me laugh. Just because you put it out there, it doesn't mean that it's going to come to you just like that. 
Now, what you need to be doing is acting in line with what you're asking from yourself. Affirmations are a great way to make this happen, to reinforce what it is you're aiming for. Not these ones here. This is not enough. Be true to who you are and write down two sentences. That's all. Five of the things that are personal to you. And each morning, spend 10 minutes reflecting on each of them before you start your day. And on the final note, you really need to be taking time to spend on you. Now, being a trader can be super stressful. It can take so much energy from you, especially when you're in your first stages of growing. Trying to figure out a plan, a strategy, trying to find that middle ground of being consistent and inconsistent, being profitable and non-profitable, it can really take a lot from you. It can affect your family life, it can affect your work life, it can affect your health and just absolutely everything. So what I will say to you is take some time to do something you really love. Learn to get away from the charts. Go and do something good, like play golf or meet some friends or go and watch a movie. I don't care what it is. Find something that you enjoy. Make sure that the time you spend on your charts is productive, that you're not feeling deflated, that you're not overexposing yourself to potentially losing unnecessarily, unnecessary and premature trades. In terms of your self-development, it can mean anything to you. It could mean going into the garden, cooking food, or just spending time with your children. But whatever you're doing, always reflect on you. Make sure that you're giving yourself enough time to become the best person that you possibly can. Me personally, I love to read books about psychology, emotional control. I also like to watch things on YouTube that are mindless. But there's a time and place for everything. So figure out how you are personally going to grow you. If there's somebody you look up to, spend some time reading about them, watching about them, whatever. There's a fine line between working hard, working smart and overexposing yourself. Figure it out and I hope this helps you. Take care for now. Bye bye.